what a difference some hay makes. Yesterday I talked about the needs that this chicken yard has to make things more comfortable and healthy and enjoyable for our hens. So we're beginning that process starting with hay. I'm going to talk a little bit in detail about why we choose hay and a little background story on there. But first, I won't take too long with this because I know folks would rather see the chickens and talk about chickens, but I want to acknowledge and really appreciate all of you who I made the video a few days ago about help edible acres grow. And I made a comment on that, but maybe some of you haven't seen that. That day, I think it was over a hundred new subscribers, which is small by some of the bigger channels, but to me that's crazy exciting. And the fact that it came almost entirely, most likely, from word of mouth of folks that believe in this channel and enjoy it talking to their friends and family or to their networks uh, rather than complete strangers through clickbait or advertising or what have you. So thank you so much for that and we'll keep developing this channel as best we can and thanks for being part of the community. Let me get back to the video. Yesterday Sasha and I headed up to Trumansburg to the main nursery to pick up some resources but also um, to pick up a the front leg of a cow for uh, from an Amish farmer, an old Amish farmer that we've made a relationship with uh, that had been damaged and had to be put down. And so we worked out an arrangement to pick up that leg and process it into some incredible meat and food for our dog and cat, a little for us. And for those of you that are sketched out by meat, don't look at this, but for those of you that raise chickens in rural environments or understand the true nature of chickens, you can appreciate what they have this morning, which is the remainder of this to peck apart. The amount of protein and mineral and iron and goodness for chickens is off the charts with this sort of material. So in the winter, it's really a lovely thing. We've also yesterday picked up compost, and so they have free choice on organic almond butter and cashew butter this morning. So it's off to a good start. But let me zoom out here. We left that in the coop for those hens that don't feel comfortable coming out. All of this is one hay bale, but both what's outside here and also on the inside. Yesterday, I uh, connected again with an old farmer friend of mine. And I want to go on a side tangent here just for a minute as a shout out and a respect to elders. This fellow, Steve, uh, he's been farming in Trumansburg for a half of a century. He's 86 years old this year, still farming square bales of hay. <clears throat> I think this is his last year. I haven't seen him in a while, and I could tell he's really winding down physically. And I just wanted to acknowledge that this fellow, with his friend Don, who's also in his mid-80s, have been putting up square bales of hay for a half of a century, feeding I don't know how many animals in our region. Uh, I worked out an exchange with him almost 10 years ago where he taught me how to pack and load hay uh, in exchange for my labor. I got a pair of hay forks from him as a gift and we loaded thousands of bales of hay onto trucks and I got to meet some really great old farmers uh, and learn how to move hay in an appropriate and safe way. So thank you, Steve, for your amazingness and thank you all the old farmers. When he leaves this world, most likely his children will subdivide the hundreds of acres that he's farmed and that's just how things go. Hey, it works. Our chickens are so much more comfortable. I've spread out one bale here to completely cover the ice and snow and I can feel the energetic difference. They're spending a lot more time outside. In fact, they're laying down in it and falling asleep in it. That little barred rock has been gorging on sprouts and probably some meat and almond butter this morning and is taking a quick snoozer. What I'll do is continue to add biochar to the ground here. I talk about this extensively in other videos, but we're making a lot more biochar as it gets colder and colder. It's about 10, 15 degrees right now and my fingers are freezing. Um, so they'll crush that charcoal and that'll get folded in to the compost. And you can see we've added a lot more compost in there yesterday and Sprout Mountain is kicking it. We'll switch over to Chicken TV in a minute here, I promise. But let's look inside the coop. 
A lot of friends are opting on this cold morning to rest on the hay for a bit and then go out and come back in. It feels so nice to have a space that is dry uh, and comfortable for their feet. The next order of business, and this we'll be documenting, is to re-envision the layout of the roosts and uh, create some nesting boxes. I want to acknowledge what I've seen or ob observed that they like to lay down in corners where it's dark, and I've read that that's their preference. Uh, so what we're going to do, most likely, is create the nesting boxes on this far back wall. So take all the roosts off and set them down this line. <clears throat> lay them out so that they're not stacked on each other, but a little bit more flat, and with enough space so that they can't poop on each other while they're sleeping. And set the nest boxes in that far corner so they have a little bit more privacy back there. Any feedback on that layout idea is more than welcome because it hasn't started yet. Uh, but we've also queued up a couple hay bales in the coop here so that they have real protection from wind and a place to play. I would suspect the 10 hay bales we picked up so far will get us at least a few months in. Quick side note on hay. Why hay instead of straw? I've talked about this in other videos where I mentioned making hay bale gardens instead of straw bale gardens. Straw, for what it's worth, unless it's certified organic and you know the farmer, almost always is pretty heavily sprayed with glyphosate. Gly glyphosate. <laughs> I have such a hard time saying that. Roundup, basically. Um, so straw as a mulch material, unless you know the farmer is absolutely not spraying it, most likely they are. Hay, by and large, is a perennial crop that uh, some farmers may spray, but I know, or I'm pretty darn sure this fellow does not spray. I've worked with him for a while. I've never seen spray equipment. So hay versus straw. Uh, hay also is a feed that the chickens can pick at. There's a lot of grass and clover seed in there, other weed seeds. And it is insulative, it is dry, but it can also be a good composting material. So that's our preference. Uh, but our little friends in here, a lot more comfortable today. And that's just one bale. I've known him long enough that he sells them to me for a low enough price. When I first got started, I traded labor for the bales because I didn't have enough income from the nursery. And now I can pay him cash and round up as he gets older. And it feels really nice to have that role reversal there a little bit. certainly cold, but our friends have a real wonderful all-you-can-eat buffet today. Sprout Mountain, as James Wall described it. <laughs> um, working pretty well. Cracked a little ice off of there this morning since it dipped down to around 10, and I put a sheet of plastic on the far end to reserve heat as we get colder and colder next week. But I'm going to shush up now and let some chicken TV happen. Ha <laughs> ha 
Cashew butter. You seem unimpressed. <laughs> A little too cold for that one. Maybe not. They seem so much more comfortable with a nice insulative hay pad under them. Look forward to keeping them very comfortable during this cold spell. <laughs>